Hey guys, it's here bringing you another video. Welcome back to another episode of League Discussion, the series that I take a topic riven apart in my own opinions and experiences and encourage you guys to join in the conversation in the comment section below. Uh, now, I haven't done one of these in a little while, so what I did is I logged on my Discord server today and I just put in the questions uh, tab. Hey, give me some topics, I'll just run through as many as, you, as I can. So I don't have any plans of how many topics we're going to do. I'm just going to read what people want me to talk about. I'll talk about it and then we'll probably go for about 20 minutes to half an hour and then that'll be the video for today. Um, again, if you've got any extra things you want to put in the comment section, if you want to chip in to each of these, feel free to do so. I'll try to read through all of them. And if you've got any topics yourselves that you want me to potentially do in the future, feel free to do that as well. Uh, so the first thing, uh, let's see, is... Um, Basically, people wanted me to cover Pike. What do I think of Pike? Do I think it's going to be a success? Do I think it's going to be a, a bad thing? You know, what's what's happening with Pike? So Pike, the first thing I'll say is I really hope people don't overreact to uh, how bad he's doing. Like, like he is doing bad. Like both of it, like all of his win rates are in like the thirty percent, roughly. Like all the like some people said, oh, he's going to be overpowered in the jungle. It's still like a thirty-eight percent win rate. His support win rate arguably is the worst right now. I think his win the three roles that people are playing him: support, top, and jungle. Support is actually the worst win rate, and I'll, I'll explain why. Then I think it's top, but then jungle's doing the best right now. Just to kind of say again, he is a support. Uh, right, have said that. Pros have said that. The reason why, and again, this is where you can't take win rate that seriously, and I really do hope, like, whenever I'm t telling you guys different examples throughout the, the years of me doing YouTube of why you can't take win rate that seriously, I do hope a lot of you kind of go, okay, yeah, I'm not going to take it that seriously anymore. So the reason why Pike's win rate and support is the worst, even though he is a support, is that I tweeted it, is that you basically have a brand new class of champion. You have an assassin support. And with that, you've got, basically support players who are trying to pick him up but are terrible at assassins like ma imagine putting a average soraka or sona or janna player on talon and say do well they're not gonna do well it's a completely different type of league of legends experience but that's what you're telling them to do is that it's like you're a sona player play pike They'll have no idea how to do it, when to do it. You know, it's going to take a little bit of time. Same goes for people that want to play Pike, and they're like, oh, damn, this assassin support's cool. Well, they're assassin players. They're, you know, the, the Talons, the Zeds, the LeBlanc players, and they're now playing support. If you take an average assassin player right like right now before Pike came out, and it's like, oh, you go play support, they'd be terrible. They'd have no idea how to do it. Um, so you've basically got that mixture. You've got basically two groups of people that are pl trying to play the champion and have no idea how to play the champion. And on top of that, it has been theorized, whatever that word may be, that the build on him isn't assassin at all. Um, people are now building him to better success, and I've actually been watching some streams, um, building him tank. And I know Riot, and what the thing that a lot of people get confused about is that Riot in the video made it a big point going, you can't build tank because it gives you no bonus health. You don't have to build health items to be tanky. You can build the resistance items instead. Um, so yeah, like I think uh, the, the biggest experience I've seen so far is like watching QDPie's streams, whether he's playing it or other people playing it. A lot of them are just like rushing banner command because that's what everybody does now. Uh, on Reddit, the front page of Reddit right now, um, there's actually a little tip for people who want to play Pike. The stone, what is, whatever it's called, the, the, the gargoyle stone plate, buy that on him because it's resistance is when you activate it, you get damage reduction. You get like 100 AD or something from it and then you get an, and it doesn't affect your execute damage. So, like, th this, th this is just taking a little bit of time to people work out. Oh, wait. I don't know if we got lied to by Riot, because, like, you'd, you'd think that Riot would have tested the this guy with every build possible. And so far, it does look like the best build is just building tank. Uh, and being basically a tanky CC monster. Like, his CC is insane. Like, he has a crazy amount of CC with an execute. So, to me, that's probably just the best way to play him. Uh, but I, as I said, I tweeted about it, and I, all I wanted is just Riot give him time. I don't want Riot to buff him anymore. I don't want Riot to nerf him anymore. Just leave him alone for at least, like, a patch, maybe two, and just see how he kind of evens out. Because, like, whenever a new champion comes out, it's either overpowered, and because it's overpowered, the win rate's insane, because anybody can play this champion, it's overpowered. Or it's pretty bad. But time and time again... 
it's been proven that it's not the champion that's bad, it's the players playing the champion are bad, but the champion's actually balanced. And then what happens all the time is that Riot panics going, oh god, people don't know how to play, it's too weak, let's buff it. And then it becomes overpowered because they buffed an actual balanced champion. It was just the player base that was bad at playing it. I really hope they just give Pike time. You know, obviously, in the back of my mind, I am kind of thinking, are they just going to change, like, the whole identity of Pike? Like, okay, guys, he's not a support anymore. He's a jungler. He's a top laner. There's a very small chance that they may do that. Um, you know, it's not that hard to do. You just adjust uh, the, the balancing and scaling of stuff. You know, you kind of get rid of, like, oh, he can't gain health. If, if you want him to be a top laner, he needs to be able to gain health. Every single person that I've seen play him or play against him in top lane, he's not a threat against anything in top the only way you lose to a pike is if you've done something bad um every single top laner that is like meta that is good beats him um so yeah uh so that's pike i, I all i all i say is it's a mixture of people not knowing how to play him you've got different groups of people um that just aren't very good at the moment so just give them time let them discover stuff like again it's only been a couple days and now people are discovering maybe we don't build him assassin maybe just build him tank and do a lot of cc and still have the execute so just just wait that's all i'd say all right so next one do 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 um i got a lot about pike but we've, we've covered that now uh next one is new players being able to buy more champions quickly like should that be a thing um this person fanta rider personally has bought uh or has 47 champions and has played for four years without spending any money. Uh, he feels like he can't expand his playstyle because he has the same champions forever. So this has been a constant discussion in League of Legends, you know, since the beginning. Uh, League has always been on a model that you start with very limited champs. You get like seven or whatever it is champions a week for free. Uh, and then you've got to buy whatever ones that you want. Um, it's Again, this has been a conversation that has been talked about a lot, a lot, a lot. The reason why it is this way is because League of Legends is a completely free game. Um, like like yourself, you've played for four years, you haven't spent any money in League of Legends, but you have 47 characters. Uh, obviously, that doesn't sound like a lot when there's like 142, 143 characters in the game. But, you know, it's a full game that you can play completely uninhibited for free. Um, so the answer to it is, do I think that they should help players get stuff quicker? Yes and no. What I think they potentially could do is something like, you know, next season we've got the whole new split system happening, right? So you have three ranked splits per ranked season. What they could do is, like, incentivize people playing ranked. I've said this for ages, man. They need to incentivize, one, more people playing ranked, and two, incentivize people watching the pro scene more. And CSGO and Hearthstone, I think, not, not Hearthstone, uh, Overwatch, I think both do it. That if you tune in watching these pro scenes you actually get rewarded in the game um like you link your twitch profile or you can actually watch the watch it in the client while you're logged into league of legends and stuff if you do that then it should give you like a chest or something like every now and then like oh you watched uh three hours of pro play have a chest on us like something like that that would incentivize a lot more people to get into it uh, and, you know, most people would probably just leave it open and just ignore it just to get the chest. But there will be a percentage of people that go, oh, I'll actually watch it then. I'm incentivized to watching it. What they could do is one of two things, uh, and they could do both, is that incentivize people to watch the pro scene, get those chests, get more champions for free. You know, champion shards, re-roll them, whatever. Uh, or the second thing is add another reward to getting gold and above in ranked. So right now, getting gold uh, and above is you get a free skin, uh, and I will say, you do get a free champion with that. If you do not own the champion uh, that the victorious skin is, you do get given that champion. Uh, but what I would say, what would be really cool in my opinion, is if you get gold, you should be able to pick a champion for free. Uh, and what you could do... Oh, wow, that, that would be really interesting if they do it. What they could do is scale it on what rank. So obviously there are different costs of champions. If, let's say, you get gold... You can pick a cheap champion. Hey, it's on us. Congratulations. Have another reward. If you get platinum, one above, you can you can pick any cheap champion, but you also can pick from another tier up of champions. Another, like, because you've got, what, like, 450, uh, 450 Blue Ensigns champions. I think it's, like, 1350. Then it goes to, like, 4800 and then 6300. Well, there's four tiers right there. So you could do, like, gold, plat, 
diamond, whatever, and you can just pick a champion, plus the having the border and the skin. I think that would be pretty cool. Again, a lot of people, you know, Riot would go, oh god, that's so much to give for free. In the end of the day, very, like, again, a big percentage of your player base isn't gold. Um, so it's only for people that get gold and above. And secondly, it's only three champions extra a year. But to a lot of people who don't spend any money in League, having a extra incentive to getting gold and having three more champions a year would be pretty big, I think. So I think that actually could be something that they could do. That would be a very interesting thing that they could toy with. Again, whether they do it or not, who knows. Um, next one is by my fr good friend Giz. He actually says, useful champions for beginners. So if you're a beginner League of Legends player, what do you play? The simple answer is whatever you think looks cool. Like, I know that's not really an answer to, like, you know, the, the more competitive of you kind of going, oh, I need to min-max how good I am and practice. If you're a beginner, just play what you think is cool. That's what I did. That's what pretty much every single pro has ever done. That's what every good player of League has ever done. Just go with what you think looks cool, because at the end of the day, that's what a video game is all about. Like, why would you play something that doesn't look cool? And I, I'd admit, I did something really stupid when I began League. I was, like, I was a lot younger. You know, we're talking, you know, nine years ago or something here. Um, I never played female characters when I first became, uh, played League. You know, whether I was younger or whatever, I just didn't think it was cool playing female characters. But then I kind of realized after a year of playing League, God, there's so many good, like, mechanical champs that I'm not playing because of this. So then I just started to not care. Um, but, you know, my first year I was playing, like, you know, legit champs that I was like, this dude's cool, man. And that's fine. That's all you got to do as a beginner is just kind of explore the game in like, you know, fresh eyes doing what you want to do. And then, you know, if you want to get a little bit more serious, then you can start watching, you know, the YouTube videos and the pro scene and kind of working out why champions get picked against other stuff. What's good, what's bad. Um, and you can kind of like one, the whole idea of League of Legends has shifted. Um, the reason why the free champion rotation existed in the first place was to get, get you on as many champions as they possibly could week by week. Um, so, you you know, a new champion rotation comes out, you play all the seven champions that are for free. Oh, I like that one. Then you focus on buying that one. The next week, another seven comes out. You play all of the seven. Oh, I like that one. I'll buy that one. That was the idea. When now it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter anymore because of the amount of content that are in the game. Because um, like back in season one, when that was a that was the case for me. You know, you had to play the free champions to know which ones to get. Well, now if you, because again, the League of Legends YouTube scene back then basically didn't exist. If you now like, I wonder if. I don't know, Warwick is good, go on YouTube, Warwick, you get to find out, you can just watch a video, and you get very much the same experience, so it's a bit weird, um, it's weirder, but just go with what you think is cool, look at what you think is cool, and then just do that, like that, to me, I don't want to complicate it any more than that, because it doesn't need to be, so, yeah, um, next one is, yeah, the whole premise around, uh, League of Legends Season 8, a lot of people are saying it feels like a constant preseason, and I will say I do partially agree. Um, so if you don't know, and I have mentioned it a few times in videos, Riot has changed the way that they're doing patches for this season. As an experiment, we are now having one little patch, then one big patch, then one little patch, then one big patch, then one little patch, then one li then big patch. Um, it's, I will say we're about halfway in the season now, roughly. It's getting a bit tedious. Like, it, it just feels like this season of any has been kind of broke. And even though they're fixing a lot of the problems, like, quite quickly, because there's a lot of patches, they are constantly making new problems. Like, constantly. Uh, this whole season, there has not been one patch that everybody's kind of gone, ah... Like, it's just not, like, they, they, it hasn't existed. Like, this patch is just the banner of command patch. Like, when you're watching Challenger play and five people are building it as their first item, you know there's a problem. Um, and it just kind of feels like they're wanting to experiment for the sake of it. I will say, League isn't a dying game by any means. But, you know, if you innovate, you die. And I think Riot and League are very worried about their population of in the video game market you know with how popular fortnite got with all the announcement of battleground games that are so goddamn popular like you know cod is making a background game i think league might be a little bit worried um and they're kind of like look how many changes we can make let's try get something that sticks and keeps people and grows the game again 
instead of worrying about the actual health of the game currently which i think is a bit dangerous because again it's very tedious like if i'm a player that plays quite a lot well actually i don't but you know, like to the average player i probably play more than the average player it's my job to keep up with league of legends and i think there's too many changes what the hell is the average guy who works a nine to five who logs on just you know a few times a week thinks he'll have no idea what's going on and that's probably your average player is the guy that logs on a few times a week and doesn't really look at the changes he'll have no idea what's going on and i think that's a bit dangerous uh, so I'm um, I'm kind of against what they're doing at the moment. I'm kind of against like the big patch, small patch. No, just just give us a big patch like you know every now and then. It's okay. Like League of Legends became the biggest game in the world by doing what they did a few years ago, not what they're doing now. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a bit eh. It just sometimes feels like the changes are a bit rushed, and you know because they are. Um, you know some people have like had things slip through the cracks going how the hell did this get to live this is broken because they probably didn't test it like even though they have a test department and a balance team they can't test everything with only a month or two between each patches like between each big patch is about a month and a half maybe two that's crazy like as a as in a game that has over 100 million monthly players how the hell can you test everything in on that scale you can't like you just simply can't so that's why there are so many broken stuff getting through the cracks is because of what they're doing. And I'm actually, I will say, I'm actually surprised that they're still doing it. Um, I thought with all what's happened already this season, they may kind of, because they did say at the beginning of the season, if it turns out it's not working very well and we can't cope, we're going to stop. Well, they're still doing it and there's still stupid stuff getting through every single patch. So to me, it's a little bit of a mistake. And it's a little bit of a worry, but you know. It's just the way that it goes for this season. All I'll say is I doubt they'll do it next season. Uh, with all the changes that are coming through, the rank system changes, the least thing you want is all those rank system changes and then all the chaos that these patches are bringing in every single patch. That would be a recipe for disaster, so I doubt they'll do that. But yeah, it's just the way that we've got to deal with it at the moment. Um, right, so... Um... How about talking about training wheel champions and how to tell when to leave them? Um, so training wheel champions is a term that I phrased. You know, it, what, it's an original term that I've, I, you know, again, I don't watch other LOL educational YouTubers, but I don't, I don't know if anybody else has used that term, but it was an original term that I think I came up with. Um, basically, the idea of it is to give you a give you a, as an easy experience to pick something up as you possibly can you want to pick up mid lane well annie's there for you You want to pick up uh, ad carry well caitlin's there for you if you want to pick up top lane garen's there for you if you want to pick up jungle and mumu's there for you like they're the champions that like can give you a glimpse of what that role will be like and you know whether they're amazing champions or just really bad champions it varies like i said caitlin as an ad carry example well caitlin is good in any level of play like she's good as a beginner ad carry and she's great she's amazing as an expert ad carry like in challenger then it does change like garen not very good in high rating but probably great in low rating it kind of enables you to learn the ropes when i would say you know when i say about training world champions and it's like you know eventually they're the the premise that i always use is eventually you'll kind of fade off them again it's situational you don't have to fade off caitlin you don't technically have to fade off annie um, you don't have to technically fade off any of them, but all the premise is is that they are champions that are more suited to low rating because they are easier, because they're more one dimensional, because they're a lot more easy to kind of grasp decision making and mechanics at the same time. Um, you don't have to leave them alone. It's just something that I would potentially recommend if you do want to progress as a player. Whether you whether the rating changes, it might not um but if you want to get better as a general player we'll use the the ultimate example to me is garen is garen is one of the most basic one dimensional champions in league of legends is there anything wrong with that not really but if you want to have aspirations to climb to higher ratings garen will hurt you eventually unless you're just a god tier garen um and you just one trick him as you know that's it it's gonna hurt you playing him rather than help you comparing to let's say picking up camille or the new aurelia like they have just something that garen will never have he may eventually like the, he'll eventually get reworked 
And, you know, that is obviously a worry that a lot of people have. Like, there are a big portion of players in League of Legends that they know their basic players. They're, you know, the Trindamir players, the, you know, the one tricks. Like they, they know that, you know, they're self-aware. I know I'm not very good mechanically. That is why I play Trindamir. That is why I play Gatton. That is why I play Master Yi. These people aren't stupid. They're self-aware. But they focus their gameplay into other areas. So I'm bad mechanically. I'll play Master Yi, but I'll focus on decision making. I'm good at decision making. I've heard a little voice of these people concerned. Because if you actually look at Riot's um, rework pattern, they're taking the basic champions and turning them into non-basic champions. Um, so eventually, again, I will say, eventually this stuff is will come for your champion. If you think you're, like, you're watching this video right now as that Garen or Yi whatever player, eventually it's going to come for you. Um, and this is where I'd say, this is where training world champions are good and bad, is that the, you get to pick up the ropes in a kind of, let, let's say, a less stressful environment, playing something more basic, and then eventually you'll jump onto something a little bit harder, and then you can progress as a player. If you never progress... And then eventually, like, you get so stuck into one champion, and then that champion gets changed, you are screwed as a player. Like, completely. Like, we've seen examples of it. Like, people have had their one trick changed. They quit the game because they're like, I can't play League anymore. Um, so I'd never recommend that. But training wheel champions are great. Like, they're, they're really good to learn the role. Um, wh when are you ready to leave them as such? Well, one, that depends if you want to. Um, but I'd probably say... It's hard to pinpoint a like 100% rule. What I'd probably say as a general rule is if you're a ranked player, again, I only can really speak for ranked players here because that's what I judge everything off. If you go up a whole division or t whatever it's called, let's say you pick up top lane and you're a silver three player and you're like, all right, I'm picking up top. I'm going to change stuff up. I'm going to pick up Garen as my training wheel champion top lane. Where I could, where I would say to you, you're ready to jump off Garen and go to something more hard, is when you go up a whole, whatever it's called. So you go from silver three, you pick up Garen, and you get to gold three. When you get to gold three, you've done up a whole five tiers. That's when I'd say you've probably progressed enough to learn something more advanced. And I'd say that goes for most things, because like even if you're bronze five and you go to silver five, that's a significant improvement. Uh, it's and then again, it's up to you. If you like, you try to play something else. Oh God, I'm not ready yet. Then go back on the training world champion. Um, but that that's maybe a general rule that I give, roughly. All right, so uh, more Pike stuff, and I think okay, so yeah, people are just really like you know banner a command. Yeah, like we we briefly spoke about it earlier that Riot doesn't really. <sighs> it's about the patch. I think it's about how quickly the patches are going out is that they can't test everything and they probably underestimate what the community is going to do. Now, what you have to imagine is in their test and balance team, let's just say they have 25 people on staff for testing and 10 people on balance. And I'd probably say they probably don't have that many, but let's just say that number. So in total, they have about 35 people that does test and balance. That has no comparison to the millions of players that play every single year, every single month, every single day. So your 30 odd people, 35 people, will they have had one game that everybody built Banner a Command? Maybe not. But when you're putting that on a scale of millions of people, it only takes one challenger game to do that on stream to show everybody how broken it is then everybody does it. Then everybody discovers it. It's it's just non-comparable. -compar and the reason why probably more stuff like this is slipping through the cracks, like I mentioned earlier, is because of the shrunken time span that the test and balance team has. Is that if you give them six months to test stuff, well, they're going to test everything. Like, they have six months. If you give them a month, that's shrinking their time by six it's going to be very hard to kind of go through everything and they're going to miss stuff. They just 100% are. Um, so I don't know. Like, again, yes, people like to blame Riot and, you know, sure, it is their fault. But I think it's I, I don't know who's well, the person to blame to me is the person that decided of how many patches are coming up this year. It's not the balance team and test team because they have very probably limited resources and time to do all this stuff. It's the person that say, yo, balance team, test team, patch team. We're doing a big patch every like month and a half. Get to it. What? 
that's that's the person to blame. Whoever made that decision is the person to blame, not the balance team itself. And what they could do, and again, maybe they are, they, they need to double their test team. They need to double their balance team, like double the staff. That's the only really way to get around it. The more people they have, the better. Um, but yeah, it's a rough one. It's a really rough one. But that's going to be it for today's uh, league discussion. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, some interesting topics. You know, a lot of them about the game health. You know, what what's kind of going on. And I, what I'd say to you guys, to swing it back to you guys. Are you happy with how Season 8 has been going so far? To me, it's been mediocre. It's not been terrible. It's not been good. You know, I wouldn't class this as a good season at all. I wouldn't class this as a terrible season like Season 6. I'd just say it's kind of like average. But is that good? Like average to be honest isn't good when the game when the game video game market is so competitive in order to be good you need to stand out and Le that's the thing i think league of legends just doesn't stand out anymore um and again one thing i really do hope they they're going to try and do moving forward is incentivize people to get into the pro scene more like they raved about this new client for ages it's not it's not nothing like whoopee like it doesn't do anything like i'm like oh my god that's groundbreaking it's just a client like it's not that different to the old one it just looks like it's got a fresh paint like a fresh coat of paint so what i'd say is i really hope with the upcoming lcs splits please integrate or next season please integrate like if you've got this fancy client that they were talking about for ages it's going to be uh, may enable us to do so much more we'll then do more show us pro games in the client and reward people for watching the pro games like have a chest have a key that would help quite a lot because then that also educates your player base to what's good champion wise and then you know as i've said to you guys a little while ago i watched a stream called salty timo a bronze five stream uh it you know he it's not an individual person he shows bronze five matches he's got like the coding set up that it just spectates bronze five matches those people are absolutely clueless. Like, they have never watched a YouTube video, never watched a program in their life because of just the builds that they're doing, the, the reason why they're taking champions places. They don't know the roles of, of champions. But if you then suddenly... in, Because they may know, not know that people make YouTube or they don't know about Twitch, but if, while they log on to League of Legends, if they have a big thing on their screen of pro games, that would help the community, I think, a lot. But that's just me. Uh, what thing do you want League to improve? What thing do you think is good, bad? Let me know in the comments. That's going to be it, though. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time. See you.